this this is going to be a lot of fun. And since it's everyone's first time with this system, we're definitely going to be revisiting and refreshing on the rules as we go, because even I am completely fresh to the system. So don't worry if things aren't clicking right away. If you have any questions, feel free to speak up at any time. Um, this is going to be uh, quite the experience. <laughs> and welcome everyone to everyone learns this setting and this story and characters and this engine live <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's the best thing to do way to do things just right in the deep end so yes. let's set the scene before our players arrive our story begins and brings us to the decaying husk of a dusty old ghost town in the california desert Cape Karma, once a serviceable tourist trap along Route 66 that made the occasional buck from starstruck tourists headed out to Hollywood. The town fell on hard times after the interstate bypass was built and made Route 66 obsolete. It left the place to slowly wither away until it was completely abandoned back in the 1990s. Now, decades later, even the bravest of urban explorers generally steer clear of the place, with numerous reports of vanishings, lost time, and the eerie presence of an inexplicable inland lighthouse still making the rounds to this very day in the dreadful year 2023. This last month of the year brings with it a bitter chill that clings to the desert. At night, it nearly drops to freezing, that might not sound like much for most folks, but for Californians, it might as well be the Arctic Circle. Despite, or more likely because of this sordid reputation that lingers here, a certain world famous influencer has decided to dredge up the rotting bones of this desiccated town to use as the site for a once in a lifetime event he's calling Escape Cod against the better judgment of his lawyers who insist that sounds like a convention of escaped convicts. <laughs> With the sun beginning to set on Cape Karma, now once more bustling with activity after so many years left in repose, we will take a peek into the lives of the poor fools that have found themselves wrapped up in this mess. So we're going to swing through this one by one and introduce our characters. And I couldn't think of a more appropriate way to decide how to do that than this. Uh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Huh? <laughs> okay. Take your pick, gentlemen. Okay, so one of these is a giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who that one is. Mm. <laughs> do we do we all pick on our own or does this is a democracy it, baby ah uh, oh. uh, hmm. i know who intruder is i know who manifesto is let's see oh such high production value <laughs> <laughs> That's probably almost, yeah. I think Intruder and Division are backwards. I think each one represents one of our characters, right? Yeah. All right, let's start with the confession. Let's pull open my notes for that. I'm so curious. <laughs> Oh, the confession sandals? <laughs> All right. We're going to take a look at one of our escape con hopefuls, an eager young ferret scoping out the town before the contest starts. Why don't you go ahead and give me a good physical description of sandals? What, what's he What's he look like? What's he wearing? What's his vibe as he's hanging out ahead of the pending escape con? Yeah, so Sandals is, as mentioned, a a ferret. He's, uh, you know, pretty, uh, I would say, lively built. He's pretty skinny, uh, pretty, I don't want to say lanky, maybe slinky is like a better way to describe it. Uh, he, you would not be, uh, I guess, wrong to mistake him for 
a much older person from afar than he really is. Uh, he dresses uh, kind of like a cross between a accountant and your overdressed grandfather. Um, which is to say, he's kind of always wearing multiple layers. He has these big, round, uh, kind of Harry Potter-looking glasses, um, that sort of just sit on his face. He's got a real Point Dexter look to himself. Uh, you know, he, he wears, like, an, like, kind of maybe like an Argyle sweater with, like, a big LL jean, uh, or LL bean jacket over it that kind of goes, like, halfway down his legs. Like, the kind of jacket that you would expect someone to be wearing in, like, the deep of winter, even though it's not very cold out. Uh, the other thing that you notice is that he... Despite doing his best to maybe look fashionable with what he has, there are just pockets all over his clothing. He is he is dressed uh, in a way by his parents and their their needs. Uh, so so very much a uh, looks like he just went school shopping, uh, but he is in fact a a young ferret of uh, about twenty five years old. Uh, and he has tan fur and just like a, a, a brown, like a darker brown sort of stripe going uh, kind of from the center of his, you know, nose, his muzzle all the way down his back to his tail. Excellent. How is he feeling about this trip? He's very far away from home right now, isn't he? Yeah, so uh, Sandals grew up in the Northeast, um, and that is still where he lives. He, he, he grew up in Maine, uh, but he moved and went to school in Boston. And sort of, he isn't completely new to travel, obviously, as part of his college. He did lots of traveling, uh, going to study things and going on trips and, uh, you know, just random academia stuff. He's He's been in an Airbnb before, so to speak, but... Uh, in general, his sphere of influence is very small. Um, he's used to just being within driving distance of his parents. Uh, his, his parents are well in their 70s, so he doesn't travel too far uh, from home. So uh, this is probably the, lar uh, the longest and farthest trip he's ever been on, and most certainly the most serious plane ride he's ever taken. So this is just kind of, th to him, I think, the dawn of like a new moment in his life. Um, it's gonna be really big for him and he thinks it's gonna change everything. Um, and, and that's an important thing for him. It's not that he hopes it will change anything. He really thinks it will. He, he has that confidence and that, uh, that sort of upstart to him that makes him think, yeah, I, I think I have this. I think this is going to be it. So he has a good amount of enthusiasm, perhaps an overly enth enthusiastic amount of enthusiasm. Yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> Overzealous, I'll say. Yeah, he's um, he's very excited. I think in the moments, you know, before all of this is going to start, he he's in that calm before the storm. Uh, he he knows everything is going to change, but it's going to change tomorrow. And uh, and so he's kind of lingering in that liminal space between, uh, you know, the two halves of his life, so to speak. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. Well, as Sandals is admiring the sunset, seeing the flash of the strange inland outhouse occasionally sweep by, he's joined by someone uh, out here on the outskirts of town. You see a, uh, a heavy set beaver fella uh, walking up behind you. He has a huge, heavy camcorder on his shoulder. And you can tell he's definitely with the crew for Escape Con here. Hmm. Uh, and as he approaches you, he uh, he gives a, a quick greeting and says, Perfect. We can uh, share in the golden hour on that one there. Uh, name's Kurgan. Uh, which, which one are you supposed to be again? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Sandy. Nice to, nice to meet you. Uh, I'm just, I'm one of the, I was like, I was invited to this thing. So I'm just kind of trying to scope, scope it out, you know, just kind of get a lay of the land. 
Well, all right. So you're you're one of the contestants, then? Yeah, yeah, I'm one of the contestants. All right. I, I think we need to get your uh, confessional shot. Uh, you know where they they do like the talking head thing behind the scenes on that one there. Oh, I, I didn't realize we were starting so early. Uh, yeah. I mean, do I? Was I supposed to go to hair and makeup or something? No, uh, no, we we're doing in things all natural out here. But uh, yeah, it's it's real swell to meet you, uh, Sandy. You said uh, put her there, pal. And he puts his uh, <laughs> hand out for you to shake. I definitely think Sandals shakes his hand, and uh, Sandals has a like startlingly uh, uh, adult traditional firm handshake. Like it, it's very much like a 1950s traditional businessman <laughs> handshake. <laughs> very firm grip that that's something uh, p- people give him compliments on he he's the kind of person who like will move his arm like from the elbow up and down once and it's like very heavy on the downstroke Ooh. all right Th- that's interesting because on that downstroke uh you hear it a loud crack and oh. the beaver pulls away and you're still holding his arm and he begins screaming bloody murder <laughs> 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 and he Ugh. breaks into laughter as he slowly like wedges his actual arm out of his shirt and you are left holding a big chubby prosthetic beaver arm and uh, he's just laughing his ass off how is sandals reacting to that i think for a moment there he was staring at the hand and his first reaction was is this finally the moment <laughs> that my powers have awoken? Am I an X-Man? Am I, am I a superhero? And he's just so excited for just a little bit too long for it to be a reasonable reaction. <laughs> I love that. that. That's not the reaction I was expecting, but it's so much better. Uh, he actually, like is looking down at you coming down from his laughing like watching as you're not making any response to this he's like hey i i got you that one there i certainly couldn't help myself on that one you just look so spookable oh uh uh, yeah yeah you really (laughs) oh that was a good one uh yeah i think sorry i'm just it's just all it's all so overwhelming being in this this situation i just didn't know i didn't know how to react <laughs> wow delayed reaction <laughs> that's silly oh uh, yeah you like that one that's top quality movie music on that one there that's why they hired me for the job just didn't think they want me hauling around a camera on top of that unprofessional a lot of them ah it, hey production value looking great i'm convinced for one this is gonna be a really top top shelf uh top shelf convention uh it's it's rare they don't really put a lot of work into that anymore everyone's doing cgi nowadays it's nice to see some practical effects okay you get the immediate vibe that you have set him off on a rant in agreement and there's gonna be no backing him down out of this rant he's like (laughs) everything cgi nowadays on that one there and we we can never get the real work look yeah i used to work for trauma with james gunn before he sold out and started sucking disney dick and big things these days and he he is absolutely uh off on another level right now and it takes him a minute to <laughs> wind himself down before he realizes you know what we, we gotta get shooting before the golden hour is gone on that one there so uh, uh let's get this confessional sh- shot shall we yeah i think sandals the whole time is is so eagerly agreeing with this person that he's just going uh-huh yeah oh i agree i completely agree with the whole <laughs> rant like not even putting an effort to to stop it whatsoever <laughs> Amazing. All right. All right. We got the camera set up there. So uh, go ahead and uh, state your name and like what you do. I, I don't know if you're one of them YouTube or TikToker people. So uh, j- just like say your name, and what you do on that one there. Oh, uh, yeah. OK. Uh, is it's like right here. OK. Do I need to move? Do you need like the background in the show? Am I? Is everything yeah, all right? Yeah, this is this should be good. I, I think this thing automatically does the white balance. Yeah, these red fives are a beast. OK. OK. Um. All right. Hold on. Come on, Sandals. Uh, I'm I'm Sandals uh, Sandals Bueller. You can you can call me Sandy. My friends call me Sandy. I don't mm, I don't know if anyone really calls me Sandy. Uh, but 
online, I'm known as, uh, I, I run the YouTube channel Sandy's Stories. Uh, you might know me from the group that solved, uh, the old the old rake arg back in the day uh i run the monsterpedia wikipedia site and i collect um yeah i collect internet horror stories and uh darknet fiction and uh boy back in the day we used to call it unfiction huh now it's mostly just video series but yeah i uh i'm really excited to be here and to to be able to take my puzzle solving skills to the next level uh here at the convention. Right there, I, uh, let's see, what, what am I supposed to ask you next? Uh, and he uh, pulls out his phone and starts like looking over the script of things he's supposed to ask you. Uh, that's stupid, that, uh, um, <laughs> uh, this is dumb. Um, uh, what, what, do you know about M Mr. Man? I mean, who doesn't? He's the biggest YouTuber in the world. Yeah, uh, let's see, um, there's like three things here that are like called to action to praise him specifically, but I don't think we're going to do those. Um, oh, oh you... like the fact that he has the most followers, the fact that he gave over $2 million to charity in the last year, and the fact that he helped cure a bunch of people's blindness? Uh, yeah, you know what? That's probably going to look good on the reel. Um, yeah, well, you, we'll go with that. Uh, what else do we got here? I don't know. You ever killed a man, Sandals? Uh, no, not yet. <laughs> are, are you planning to son oh no no uh no 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 plans at the moment uh, all right <laughs> well it's been great talking with you sandals uh uh shot cape escape i think that's the last thing you're supposed to do cape escape all right yeah i don't know what cadence we're supposed to say that to so i'm just gonna have everyone else do it like that Oh, okay. Well, I mean, if that were, I can do like two or three or five or, you know, however many more you might need. I think we're about down on that one there. So let's go ahead and uh, wrap it up and head on over to the pavilion. I think uh, they're about to get started on that one there. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, hey, it was great to meet you. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. I, I am going to need that arm back though. I only got the one. Oh, and he he literally has been holding it the whole time, in, including <laughs> in the frame of the shot. So he just hands it straight back over to you. <laughs> All right, excellent. So we're that that'll wrap up confession. So let's go ahead and see what's uh what's our second omen going to be. <laughs> we have to know we have to know oh, what is this going to be like <laughs> all right so it looks like we're gonna go and take a look at the manifesto next All right, it's the night of the big match. The big man himself is entering a packed arena to roaring crowds, ready for the biggest fight of his career, knowing that his family, his beloved family is in the audience watching him. We hear the announcers call out for him. The one, the only, Manifesto! Pyrotechnics displays shoot out, the crowd goes wild as our hero, Manifesto, begins to walk down that aisle. What What's his entrance like? What does he look like in his full getup as he is entering the arena of his dreams? Okay. Well, his, his arena of his dreams, this this wonderful high school gymnasium that everyone has crammed into. We've got at least 30 people in the crowd. I'm very happy to see them all. 
It's it's definitely quite an impressive turnout, I'm sure. <laughs> and he, you know, Manifesto, he he's fucking making his way down. He's swaggering. He's fist bumping everyone in the crowd, all all, all ten of them, and uh, making his way over the top ring, taking taking the microphone from the announcer, and he's like, you know, hello everyone. I know you've been waiting for it. I know you've read it. You need it. You bleed it. You read it. It's the manifesto. Live in la vida loca. Hello, my luchadorables. Welcome. And the crowd the goes mild. Uh, <laughs> uh, following your your little announcement, uh, you see a a a spotted Dalmatian boy. Couldn't be older than fourteen. He looks like he's with the high school newspaper. He comes up into the arena and he he brings the microphone up to you, and it's like, uh, all right, Mr. Manifesto, we got we got to cut a promo. Um, uh, so I, I'm supposed to ask you, are are you feeling confident tonight? I, I am, bro, 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 I'm feeling very confident. Bro, oh. kid, kid, what's your sub count here? What, you know uh, what mine is? 110. That's more oh. than every single person in this room. And you know what? They are all going to be tuning into my vlog after this. Because I'm going to be talking about this match, and people are going to be talking about this match for at least seven to eight days. You'll be remembering it for a while. The, uh, the Dalmatian kids uh, seem to get a little more confident as he asks you, who are you fighting tonight? You know, I don't actually know, but, you know, I, I accept all. Anyone who enters the ring with me, they know what's going to happen. They know they're going to know the manifesto by heart once the match is done, because they're going to read it with their face against the mat in blood or sweat or other bodily fluids. Whatever is acceptable under the terms of my agreement and contract signed here tonight with Maxwell High School and Educational Center. <laughs> so he's now looking straight at you, stiff as a board, and he asks, do you know where you are right now? What, what, what kind of question is that? Of course I do. I know exactly where I am. Do you know where uh, you are? I don't know who you are. I know who I am. As you look around, the the stadium fades from view, and you realize that's not where you are. You're you're in Cape Karma. You're you're here to participate in the event. I I don't know what all that wrestling nonsense was about, but you're here now. Is isn't that good? It's a bit discombobulating. I assume I'm, I'm I'm waking up from a little slumber there. You hear the snap of a camera and see a rotating spotlight of a distant lighthouse shining in your eyes. You see a young Chihuahua boy talking at his phone, which is like pointed at both him and you, so he can get both of you in the same shot. And he says... So you can see, we got some real normal ones here at Cape Escape this year. Uh, big NPC energy on this guy. And he then, uh, like, stashes his phone and puts it away, and he looks up at you. You're, like, four of him tall. And he says, So, uh, are you a real luchador? Or does this get up some kind of sex thing? Oh, well, first of all, bro, you know, respect the heritage. This isn't Cape Escape, bro. It's Escapar del Cabo. You know, <laughs> what's your sub count, bro? Like, um, I don't keep track of that anymore. After it hits over a million, it says M after the first n numeral, so it's hard to keep track of. Okay, in, in that circumstance, we would see his demeanor kind of shift. He'd be <laughs> like, oh, oh, okay, oh, 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 bro, bro, you know, <laughs> really, right? Let, let's let's get a let's get a picture, bro. You know, man, I, I'm, I just met you, man, but I'm already tier three for you, bro. You've got that energy, you know, you got sass. Seeing you immediately whiplash from talking shit to this child to like buttering him up. Uh, it's making him feel uncomfortable and he takes a couple steps back and he's like, I must have. And a moment later, a woman comes trundling out. Trundling is the only way I can really describe the way she walks. 
you can tell this is certainly his mother. There's definitely a family resemblance there. As she comes out in her dull purple moo cigarette in paw, a uh, spaghetti string purse strapped over her shoulder. Damn. <laughs> and she and uh, she wonders, over, Mikey, what do you want? Are you bothering this nice man, Mikey? Damn, damn she's got that body yaddy yaddy. She sure do. And she turns, she like waves her obnoxious child off and turns to look at you and says, um, hello, sailor. <laughs> might be nice to this gentleman. If he pays his cards right, he might be your new father. Oh, okay. I, I'm pleasured to always meet a potential fan, but, you know, I've got a, a special lady waiting for me back home. And, uh, I mean, she might not know it yet, but by the end of this, man, she's going to be just ready. As, as Mikey departs, he, he shouts, Mom, that's gross! <laughs> and, uh... Uh, th this woman now comes uh, full in your face, uh, not seeming to back down despite uh, your nice, soft rejection of her. And she says, yeah, she, don't worry about that, not handsome. Uh, so I apologize for Mikey. Well, he's a weird little shit, but he fell out of me, so I gotta love him. If he gets you any problems, you have my legal permission to give him a medium-grade ass whooping. Now, uh, wh what's it I can call you, handsome? My name's Helena Hunt. Well, pleasure to meet you, Helena. I am the one, the only, manifesto. You can read it, you can bleed it, but at the end of the night, you'll need it. Manifesto? Oh, how charming. I love a man with only none name, like uh, Fabio or Flea. It's a good omen, as far as I'm concerned. Well, technically, there's usually a star or an asterisk before or after it. That's part of the trademark. <laughs> How do you how do you pronounce those? It's it's like a sh sound, so it's like manifesto. Oh, uh, so it's like TV static buzz coming out your mouth. Yeah. All right, I'm, I think I can fit my mouth around that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, as these two are making an acquaintance, we're going to take a turn and look at the third omen of the evening. The stars upset me. <laughs> <laughs> I love the stars. That adds so much flavor to them. No, <laughs> it's very good. <laughs> flavor. You, do you prefer your manifesto unflavored? I don't think that's going to sell. <laughs> Unsalted manifesto. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So after looking at our confession and our manifesto, let's check in on our intruder give this a second to load up as the sun is setting over Cape Karma and before escape count has even started Somebody has already gotten a head start on exploring the ruins of this dusty old town. Scrounging through an abandoned barn, we find a young urban explorer being quiet as a mouse, or rather, quiet as a rat, as he peeks around somewhere he's not supposed to be. So, Go ahead and describe Javier for us. What does he look like? What is he wearing? What is he doing here? So this is Javier. Uh, he is a short, chubby rat. He's wearing a white members only jacket uh, and a hoodie and a heavy metal T-shirt. And uh, he's very uh, probably overdressed, kind of like sandals for the uh, for the weather. Um, but yeah, he's really excited to be here exploring. He uh, runs a, a website for urban exploration. He's into photography and checking out creepy places. So um, he's been wanting to come to this place for a long time, but has heard those nasty rumors of kind of bad stuff happening here. And that sort of gave him pause. But he knew that the time to, to strike would be while other people were in town. So sort of a vague safety in numbers thing where he can run for help if he needs it, but 
he likes doing his own thing here. Excellent. Is he keeping out an eye for anything in particular as he's surveying this old decrepit barn? He would love to see something supernatural as much as he doesn't believe it on the surface. Uh, he's been to many creepy abandoned places before. He's heard all of the urban legends. He's heard all of the ghost stories, uh, but he never sees anything. So he's skeptical. Uh, but part of him would love to see something that would just blow his mind. But in the meantime, he's just here to take pictures and enjoy the creepy vibes. I see. I see. Does he think he's alone here? Yes. Uh, he didn't see anyone else in this building when he first stepped in. So he knew there were some people just, you know, down the ways, a couple buildings down. But uh, yeah, he didn't see anyone uh, when he stepped, stepped into this building here. Is he sure about that? Your blood runs cold as the rotating lighthouse spotlight outside casts the shadow of a tremendous figure through a nearby window into the building you're searching. Shit. You, Fuck. you see this tremendous shadow, and it appears to be looking right at you. And then just as the lighthouse begins to rotate its light away, you hear loud footsteps coming towards you. Oh, no, 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 don't like that sound. The shadow is gone, and you hear the door that you enter through being pulled open. What do you do? Do you try to find another way out of here? Do you hide? Do you come clean? I'm going to try to hide. All right. So we're going to do our first test of the evening. You'll want to pop open Javier's character sheet. And on the right side, under general abilities, you'll see you have hiding as an ability. Uh, yes. When you hide, you will roll uh, that die that says plus zero next to it. And if it is high enough, you will successfully hide. It will be rolling a six sided die. And if you hit the plus next to it, you can add points from your hiding pool to increase that result. That will permanently spend those points until we have a time to rest and refresh them. But it can increase your chances of getting a successful result on top of your D6. That's all you add to the D6. You don't add any kind of modifiers or static bonuses. It's just a D6. And if you spend hiding points, you get those points added to the roll. You gotcha. do have to decide that before the roll, though. So, gotcha. It's when I'm, when, mm -hmm. it is time for a hiding roll. Do you want to add any points to it, or just roll it as is? Ah, uh, you know, this isn't my first time hiding. I'll be good. Whatever. I got this. You got this. All right. Let's see that roll. All right, a four. That's a pretty good roll. All right. You see lots of rubble and refuse around this place. Uh, it definitely hasn't been picked through very cleanly, so there are lots of good places to hide. What kind of hiding place is Javier going to look for? I am going to look for some dilapidated rubble in the corner of the room and do my best to hide behind it. Going to crouch behind it, and uh, I'm pretty short too, so hopefully that'll work to my advantage. All right. Uh, after you hide, you hear loud uncertain footsteps beginning to pad through the dilapidated barn. It looks like they're searching for you. It definitely sounds that way as they slowly rummage around the barn. They don't call out to you, though. And from the sounds of their footfalls, you can tell this is an immense something. It looked like a person in silhouette, but it impossibly large. Do you want to try and stay as hidden as you can or sneak a peek of whoever's out to find you? Uh, I, I want to sneak a peek. I got to see who this is. I know it's not a ghost. Uh, I don't believe in ghosts, but uh, <laughs> I, I got to see what I'm dealing with here because uh, I mean, we got to run if it's like some crazy dude. It, it, it's uh, some kind of squatter that's uh, making residence here. Exactly. All right. So let's see, as you peek out, you see an absolutely 
massive person, a huge muscle built guy in a bright pink tank top with a really cute disarming face. Who the fuck is this? And let's see if we can get him to load up screen. Dibs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hello, sir. And as you see him, he hasn't quite, quite found you yet because your hiding role is actually very good and his ability to find people is not particularly good. Uh, you see him like rooting through piles of trash that you obviously could not fit a person beneath. And then he reaches up and scratches his head. And he's like, I don't know where that guy went. Are you in here, little man? Do you answer him or do you try and stay hidden? You know, he looks uh, not very dangerous and every bone in my body is telling me to stay hidden, but I'm just going to level with the guy. So I'm going to be, uh, hey, man, are, are you looking for me? Uh, he whirls around uh, gasping and like actually leaping almost a foot into the air. But he's a he's a rabbit. That's fine. They do that all the time, sometimes just for fun. And he lands back down and he's like, oh, is this a little rat man? How you doing, little man? Uh, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, you know, the weird place to run into someone, given the condition of this building and all. But uh, yeah, uh, how are you? I, I'm good. Uh, uh, my name's Goose. What's your name? Uh, my name is Javier. Oh, Javier, like uh, like like caviar. Uh, I, I guess. Wow. Cool. All right, Javier, you're not supposed to be here right now. Uh, I kind of take oh. you to go see the boss lady. Oh, uh, is that, I mean, is that an issue? I, I take uh, pictures of abandoned places, so I just thought I'd poke my head in here and snap a few photos. If you don't mind, let me just do that for a few more minutes, then I'll get out. Oh, you do pictures? Oh, look, you know what? We, we, our cameraman, he's, he's gone. Uh, we could use another one. Let me let me get you to talk to the boss lady. I think she will have a good time with you. And otherwise, she will sue you for trespassing. So let's hope that that don't happen. Oh, OK. Yeah, uh, I, I think I'm good. I don't need to see her, I think. I think I just would like to keep doing what I'm doing, if that's OK. <laughs> that wasn't a question. And then he just ambles forward and picks you up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, little buddy, we're getting get out of here. And with Damn that, it. these two uh, leave from this dilapidated barn and go to meet the boss lady. While they're doing that, let's take a look at our fourth omen. Let's see. We're running out of omens here. Didn't that used to say division? I think it did, but I wrote it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I think I know what they mean. <laughs> <laughs> I was All trying right. to parse it out. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like next we're going to we're going to cash in our lifeline so to speak. Just a second load. Get Goose the hell out of here. He's gotten this scene. Goodbye, Goose. All right. With the sun almost completely set over Cape Karma now, we see that a few miles away, a lone car is still making its way to the dusty old ghost town. Inside that car is our safety coordinator, hired as an outside specialist to come oversee the weekend-long event at the last minute. Thankfully, he's making time and a half for this nonsense, so it's not all bad. Uh, inside that, well, let, first, let's actually describe the vehicle. What kind of vehicle does Grayson drive? Oh, it is a 2006 Toyota Corolla. It's got like 300,000 miles on it. Um, 
white, definitely has some dings and scratches. Doesn't really care about the outside of it. No, all right. And inside, we see with the windows rolled down, uh, our safety coordinator, Grayson. What what does he look like? Uh, Grayson is dressed um, in a business casual kind of attire. He's got a button-down dress shirt. He's wearing just jeans and a belt. Um, he is wearing a tie because he's going out to more or less a customer site. That's... Uh, if he's overseeing an event like this, he has to treat them as a customer, so he dresses up a little bit. Hmm. I just realized he's kind of wearing the Dilbert. I'm going to ignore that. I kind of <laughs> didn't say anything. That, that's cursing. So, as Grayson is driving his car into town, starting to see the small cluster of buildings on the horizon getting closer, uh, you hear a chirp from your phone and notice it light up with an incoming call from the wife. As you look at the screen, what name do you see? Is it her name? Is it a pet name? Does it just say wife? It just says wife. All right. So uh, do you pick up the phone or ignore it? <laughs> oh, I got to pick it up. I better not leave her waiting. All right. It, uh, as you pick up the phone, you get a chance to talk with wife. Uh, she, she's, she checks in and says, hey, uh, Grayson, I'm sorry we didn't run into each other before you had to leave. Um, are you... Well... It, it, uh, and she, it seems like she's had having difficulty deciding what she wants to say, what order. You know she has this problem sometimes. It's kind of an anxious thing. She takes a deep breath to, to center herself and then asks, Are you, are you going to be home in time for dinner on Monday? Uh, I hope so. It's it's been a long drive out here though, so if if we end up taking too long, I maybe not. I honestly honestly I hope so. Uh, you you do remember what Monday is, right? Monday Grayson, I'm gonna need you to give me a sense trouble test. Huh. I am going to spend a point for this. <laughs> this is absolutely vital that you succeed. Ooh, is forever. Unfortunately, you needed a four on that. Big sad. You're, you're racking your mind trying to think of birthday, anniversary, what the hell is, what the hell is Monday? And before you can land on it, um, she pipes up and says it's well t today's the 21st sweetie so tuesday is going to be christmas eve you're going to be home by tuesday at least right oh absolutely i'm absolutely going to be home by tuesday i can't i can't possibly imagine they keep me out there longer than monday all right well as long as you're back by then i i think everything all right you okay Snapper wants a shirt signed by Mr. Man. Do you think you can manage that? Any kind of particular shirt? I'm sure they have merch. Um, whatever shirts they have, I don't know. He's size 14, so he's get he's getting bigger. Okay, should I go a size up so it lasts a little longer, or what do you think? Uh, yeah, you know what? That's a good idea. We'll do that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm sure I can swing it. Well, he's gonna be surrounded by. No, we'll, we'll figure out a way. We'll figure out a way. Okay. Because that, I don't know if you've gotten him anything. Because that could just double as a good Christmas present for him. I, I, I got the kids stuff already, but, you know, you know how much he loves Mr. Man. That's true. That's true. You, know, I don't know why he watches this garbage, but he enjoys it. So, yeah. No, we'll figure it out. Yeah. All right. I I know things have been crazy at the office lately, but please, next next time you get voluntold to go to one of these things, just just tell them no. The kids miss spending time with you. And I miss spending time with them. I you know I don't want to be out here I, like middle of the desert. This is not this is not a good time. But they they want a senior resource at these kinds of things. I can't always just say no. Yeah, I, uh, 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 and the call starts like breaking out Hello? as you're getting Hello? closer to town. Hello, uh, just breaking. Uh, fine, love you, love you too. And then uh, the call does go out. 
unfortunate, but at least you did get to say you love her. Hopefully not for the last time, but we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Uh, as you hang up, you see the lighthouse in the distance guiding you into town. Why is there a lighthouse in the middle of the desert? <laughs> All right. I think it's time for our final omen. I like being called up for class presentations. <laughs> Are you prepared? <laughs> what am I looking at? Oh, I got the sesame sticks. <laughs> we take a look inside the convention's home base set up here in Cape Karma. Find a well-stocked craft service table set up in the back room for all our contestants and crew to nibble on as they're going about shooting. Our accomplished caterer has finally finished his work for the day, and he can head home. He doesn't have to deal with this nonsense for the long weekend. Most of the setup staff, in fact, have already gone home, um, making him one of the last few stragglers left on site. Let's go ahead and describe Jet for us. What's he What's he look like? Uh, very tall, slender, intimidating, except... But he has too much history with people that are close to him, so they don't see him that way, and he's a huge pushover for them. Uh, reasonably good with people when he chooses to be, which is rare. Uh, and he does not want to be here. Uh, he does not... like. He is here for the crew of a YouTuber, and he himself does not have a YouTube account. He's the kind of guy that just watches without an account, just whatever the algorithm serves him. Yep. Wow. <laughs> nothing, what nothing, a monster. Nothing saving his contacts list does not spend time more so than needed on the phone. He is just a ghost of a person. So, as you look over this table, what kind of snacks have you prepared here? Because. I feel like Jet probably has a very particular brand of catering. There's all kinds, different sorts. Some go heavy on the candy, some like the baked goods, some try to keep it healthy with some veggies. What What's Jet's particular flavor of refreshments? Oh uh, yeah, like re roasted sesame sticks, orange slices, chocolate crickets, the works. Just the oh, regular defaults, Wonderful. really. Uh, you, got, you gotta love those. Um, as you White admire bread. your... <laughs> as you admire your <laughs> handiwork uh, looking over this fully stocked craft service table uh, you look up and see someone has is already vulturing in on it like the second you finish uh, you look over and see one of your fellow crewmates um, a shorter donkey guy named Moon and he comes up and he says yeah dude you saved my life oh my god look at all this <sighs> Casey has me on this stupid diet and I can't eat anything at home. <laughs> Is our crickets keto? I don't know if it's supposed to be keto or what, but uh, you know what? I'll, I'll have to ask Casey when I get back home. Uh, he's doing so much better now. <laughs> And he gets this real big, dumb smile on his face. Uh, sorry, I forget. Do you have a girlfriend? Uh, no. I do oh, not. Okay. Yeah, I, I forget. Uh, I forget that sometimes people still ask me if I have a girlfriend. And it gets, it gets hard to explain because Casey is a, is a boy now. And, and it's great. And it's a, it's a big, it's, it's going to be a bit a big weight off his chest <laughs> after we get the surgery. That, that's his joke. I'm stealing it. He's so funny. Uh, ah, <laughs> off, off his chest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, happy uh, for you. Yeah, it's it's gonna be great. I, we we need that bonus though that Mr. Man keeps promising us. Uh, have you heard about that? You think the bonus is gonna gonna come in? He's never he has never received a single bonus in the last his six entire years. life. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, bonus will come in any day now. I always say yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, it'll be great. Uh, 
Hey, say, say, you're from here, right? From before you moved to Glendale? Keep reminding me. Yeah. Do you have any, any cool memories about this place? Any cool stories? Did you see a ghost? Ghosts aren't real. I mean, people think things that aren't real all the time. Like, capitalism. <laughs> Sir, your trumpet is real. Yeah. So, so is the ska that I, that comes out of it. It's very real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And music is real. Uh-huh. Ghosts are not real. <laughs> you follow? I mean... Uh, <laughs> fine. If ghosts aren't real, then how come the... Every every culture says there's ghosts. It, that's not well, it was like a one idea that one dude had, and then it spread. Everyone came up with it individually. We all said along the same thing, so it must be real, right? You ever heard of magical thinking? Uh, you, you, you think so hard it makes magic happen, like a like a topa? That's the hope. Oh. <laughs> I'll get back to you when it happens. Uh, Alright, uh, uh, oh yeah, um, uh, man wants to see you with your dad sitting up back here. what Melvin do now? <laughs> just, you're the only one who still calls him that, man. It's, it's, it makes me laugh every time. Don't, don't do it in front of him, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't know what he wants in particular, but, uh, he's, he wants you, uh. Yeah, so it's great to be wanted. <laughs> oh, is that, oh, orange slices? Hell yeah. Yep, fill on up. Leopard so, Boy tells me great to be wanted. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so as you finish up with Moon here and you, you head outside uh, to meet with Mr. Man, you're taking a stroll down memory lane as you see the town again. This has happened a couple times since you've gotten here today and started setting up, but this this particular this particular glimpse at the lighthouse outside of town draws you in. You're momentarily stunned by the sight of it. You feel this weird sinking feeling when you look at it. Was that was that there back when you were a kid? Do you remember that? Do I need to roll on whether I remember that? Uh, no, just just describe for me. Do, do you do you think you remember that? That's up to you. It's an inconsistency, like a background detail he never looks straight at, mm. and so he doesn't. He lowers his cap, and it leaves view. It, it's hard to look away from, but you're pretty good at controlling what you look at. That said, you are a little startled when you hear the familiar hey, hey, uh, come from behind you, and Mr. Man arrives. Let's give him a second to load in. All right. You see the big beefy saber tooth with his multicolored hair and his trendy on brand shirt. And he says, hey, hey, Jeff, how you, how's it doing? How's it going, man? Hey, Melvin, what is what's going on? Close enough uh, for the day. Uh, you, you see a twinge of mm, uh, go through him as, as he hears the name, but he doesn't correct you outright, even though he just called you Jeff, so this is fair play. Um, uh, he says, uh, uh, uh mm, mm. so, uh, I might need you to stay a little bit longer than we talked about. You don't say. Hey, turn that frown upside down, buddy. Uh, look, we got a couple contestants that are ended up being no-shows. And he pulls out his call sheet for the event. He says, uh, Comic Kazi and the mystery MRE guy. Ah, uh, he's so funny. Uh, anyway, uh, some of the puzzles we set up are going to require groups of four. So I know you're done here, but 
could I ask you to stay for the weekend and hang out with one of the groups to catch some B-roll, maybe participate a little for the, the things they need four people for? It'd be such a waste to have you drive three hours out here just to set up a snack bar and drive three hours back. Melvin, we talked about this. Rigor, cameraman, driver, caterer. I got a long list here, but on that list is not talent. I mean, he, you've appeared on the screen before. Yeah, I've also tripped. And, well, okay. So maybe you don't need to appear on screen. You know what? You're, you'll be the one holding the camera so you can control who's on the screen. I can I, I see that loophole. I see what you've done here. <laughs> Don't think <laughs> Don't think you can get one past me. <laughs> oh, I could never get one past you, Jet. You're 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 a real a straight shooter there. And as he speaks, you you hear him slipping a little bit back into his old accent before he developed the terminal YouTuber voice and it's kind of a little refreshing to be honest. The glimmer that glimmer of, of the old him you knew back in high school resurfacing a little bit. But I we can count on you for this, right? I, I can't get anyone else to do it with you. I'm, I'm really counting on you, Jet. He sees that look, those dumb little handlebars sticking out, and it works every single time. And you don't I'm... even have to say anything. He He can see it in your eyes. Uh, as he like peeks down to see your eyes under the brim of the hat, he he can see that you're gonna say yes. He says, "Oh, thank you so much. Uh, go ahead and take the red V Raptor. That thing's a beast. You don't even have to white balance it." Thing's not even gonna work, is it? Yes, absolutely, Melvin. And uh, you see the camera he pointed to. It's a, it's like a fucking cube. It's not like one of those heavy can quarters you put over your shoulder. You don't know how to operate this thing, but you know from looking at it that it costs more than you make it a year. And man departs. He heads inside to greet Moon. He says, hey, hey, Mooney. Hey, in there, buddy. Pride month never ends, my guy. <laughs> and that is the last of our omens for the evening. So now that we've introduced all of our characters, let's see what it is that is going to bring them together. Friendship. Is it friendship? <laughs> is that what's going to save the day? <laughs> it's a very friendship-oriented setting. Yeah. I would like all of those CRTs, please. So you say the <laughs> toaster stream in a pile right there? Donate yeah, these to I the will, toaster fund. I'll I'll pick those up. Don't get rid of them at the end of the convention. I'm ready. Alrighty. So Javi, buddy. Yeah. Uh are you gonna let Goose like carry you all the way here or are you gonna like be able no. to say I think you walk into walk and then walk along with them? Yeah, yeah I, I, you, hey, you can put me down, man. I'm, you know, I'm not a flight risk. You just, I, I'll walk with you. It's all good. Uh, are you sure, little buddy? I got these big, strong arms for a reason. Yeah, yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll be good. Hey, um, but I think we got off on the wrong foot, actually. Um, is, is there anything I can do to convince you to just, you know, kind of let me go? And that's up to the boss lady to decide. That's not for me. And don't you try run away. I'll get you. C can I roll the flirt? <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> All right, Actually, let's go. How, how uh, does this work? Since flirting is uh, a skill on the left side, your investigative skills, instead of rolling, you just spend a point from it and you succeed. So would you like to spend your one flirting point to flirt with this man? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Tell me how... Yeah, the hit the button and that'll spend it. And then tell me how this goes. How are you flirting with this giant stack of rabbit? Hey, so, you know, uh, the reason I said hi to you before and you popped in the room is uh, I thought you were pretty attractive. So, uh, you know, I just wanted to maybe start over here, see if we can work something out. Well, you, you think I'm attractive? Well, I, I do work out a lot, but... Huh, yeah, yeah, I, I can see. 
Uh, you're really soft now that I think about it. And he kind of like squeezes you a little bit and he gets this, this glimmer in his eye. Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe the boss lady doesn't have to know. I haven't told her nothing yet. Oh, that that, that would be great. Thank you. And uh, as he uh, sets set you down, well, he wasn't holding you, but he was squeezing you. So as he unsqueezes and uh, backs away, he's like, oh, all right, get, get out of here, little buddy. And before you can get away, unfortunately, you hear the clopping of hooves come up from behind you. A quick mechanical question. I don't think I actually press the spend button. Do you want me to press spend now? Does, yeah, does go ahead. That way we, uh, we we know there's nothing left for future reference. Excellent. There we go. Got it. And as you turn around, you see a slender horsewoman dressed in an extremely sharp business suit. She definitely has shoulder pads on. Uh, she looks straight out of the 80s. This is very interesting fashion. And she approaches you and says, what's the deal with this one? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Miss Potatoes. Um, this this guy's not from around here. He was just leaving. As you see, he's trying to cover for you. Yeah, I, I was just leaving. Uh, you know, I was here to take pictures, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's all good, right? The the Miss Potatoes opens her mouth again after looking. Uh, are you holding your camera right now? Yeah, 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 it's in my hands. All right, after looking over your camera. Pictures. We could use another photographer for the event. Um, Are you in the union by any chance, Mr. Uh, Javier? Uh, no, I, I am not. Actually, is that going to be a problem? No, I prefer that, actually. <laughs> this is... Okay. This is not a union operation for the most part. Say, Javier. Yeah, yes, yeah. You could use a little bit of extra money, couldn't you? Uh, uh yeah, yeah I, I, I suppose I could. How about, let's make it an even 3,000 for the weekend. Huh? That should be more than enough, more than fair. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that, uh, that sounds great, actually. That sounds fantastic. Yeah, I will uh, take pictures of anything you want me to. All right, and you've brought your own camera, so we don't even have to bring our equipment out of storage. Now, um, go see Derek and have him sign up a, a waiver for Javier here. Oh, all right, Miss Potatoes. And you hear a phone ring, but it's not like a modern like iPhone ring. Uh, it's like the it is the iconic Nokia. And she pulls out a brick phone that's not even a flip phone. This is an ancient device, <laughs> and she begins speaking on it. Yes, yes, okay. And then she motions that she needs to go. You guys handle yourselves. And uh, she begins walking away while talking on the phone. So, uh, wow, that worked out pretty well. I'm going to be perfectly honest. I really did not want to be responsible for taking pictures for this. But man, that paycheck sweet in the deal. So that's pretty rad. Yeah, three thousand dollars. That's more than I'm making in once. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know how to feel about this. <laughs> Hey, do uh, you want to go help me celebrate the sweet paycheck I'm going to be getting? <laughs> uh, I guess. Well, we got to find Derek first. Uh, ah, he, should, he should be okay. around here somewhere. Sure, um, sure. As you look, you you see this massive pile of televisions that I haven't mentioned until now because it is such a colossal eyesore. These huge CRTs are all displaying the faces of people who are wearing Mr. Man brand t-shirts. And... A lot of them look like they're they're moving their mouths or shouting something at the screen. And you can hear this faint grumbling noise uh, from someone on the other side of the pile. And let me fetch him. Uh, 
Goose is going to lead you around to the other side of the pile, and there you see a small Anoli lizard boy. Well, with those eyes, you can't really call him a boy. You know he's seen things with eyes like that, and coffee clutched in his prosthetic arm like that. This this is definitely a man, just a very small one. A manlet, if you will. And he grumbles, uh, I have to go through and get all of these. And Goose speaks up and he says, Hey, Derek, we need uh, to print out another liability form for our new friend here. Another form? A lot in paper? Yeah, from a printer. Okay. And he looks you over and just sighs and finishes his coffee. As he moves his arm, you realize this is not like a fancy sci-fi prosthetic arm that is actually articulatable. He just moves the root of it and he has to use his other arm to articulate it into various poses. But it looks like there's magnets in it and there's a magnet on his cup of coffee, so that's good for him. So he goes through the pile and finds, surprisingly, a printer. (laughs) and starts uh, sending something to it with his phone before it bleats out an error. What do you mean there's no magenta? This is a black and white document! And about that time, a white uh, Ford Explorer, did we say? A Corolla. Corolla. A white Corolla rolls up and our safety coordinator uh, arrives at what looks like a very unsafe pile of active CRTs. You cannot imagine. Are these all plugged into the same outlet? Is this a colossal fire hazard? What is going on here? What is this? What? Why? What? What is this all about? And as you get out of the car, exasperated at this scene, uh, Goose turns to explain to you, Oh, you're the safety coordinator? Yeah, this is uh, the hub, Mr. Man calls it. It's It's got, like, streaming faces from all his biggest fans, so uh, it, it, it's like scenery. It's it's for the event. The hub? The hub? Did you even hire a technician to put this together? Did you have anyone look this over to make sure it's not just going to catch on fire at any moment? Uh, And as you ask that, the the small lizard next to Goose uh, pipes up and says, They hired a network engineer. That's not going to be sufficient, and it will probably catch on fire. Uh, oh. Okay, do you at least have an equipment checklist for this? We got to start looking it over and maybe take some of this down. <laughs> I'll squirt it to you on your uh, your 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 blackberry or whatever you have. The uh, the lizard uh, explains. Can we can we print something out? Uh, another one wants to use the printer. No, the printer isn't working because we don't have magenta toner. Why would you need magenta? It's just a black and white list. That's what I'm saying! And he articulates his prosthetic arm into being thrown up in rage and then articulates it back down. Okay, yeah, Blackberry will do. That's a good start. Um... Grayson, you have computer use as a technical skill. Would you like to use that to bypass the magenta toner restriction on this printer or fuck it? Absolutely. Yep. 100%. You happen (laughs) to know a secret technique that doctors hate that causes the the, the HP DeskJet 5000 to ignore color ink altogether and just print black and white, no fuss, no trouble. And because of that, we do officially have a liability waiver that Javi can sign. There was already a document waiting to print. Great. Uh, We should be able to get another one. Just, uh, okay. So let's see, equipment checklist. All right, here we go. And he starts printing out the equipment checklist as he hands the liability waiver over to Javier to sign. 
Yeah, uh, does anyone have a pen on them? I, I can't sign this without a pen. I got a pen. Grayson instinctively pulls one out of his pocket and clicks it while not even looking. Wow. Oh, okay, Goose uh, also pulls out one that has like a really festive uh, plush rabbit as a topper on the end, but he sees Grayson's beating him to it and he kind of looks sad and puts it away. So Javier just immediately signs it without even reading anything on it because he's just like, man, those three thousand dollars, that's going to be awesome. So, yep. Yeah, here you go. All right. Uh, wonderful. Um, remember that forever. Anyway, so uh, as uh, this scene concludes, you hear uh, an announcement uh, from the pavilion nearby. It looks like they're getting ready to start the festivities for tonight. It looks like everyone everyone is grouping up over there so we have a stage with some chairs set out and the last glimmers of the fading sunlight uh, make the perfect opportunity for mr man to appear and give a speech for the opening of escape Con. uh you see kurgan is also here uh he's got his camera at the ready filming mr man just uh, yeah all right and Mr. Man opens with a, hey, hey, everybody. I'm so happy to welcome you all to this once in a lifetime opportunity. The one and only Kate Escape Con. And he kind of fumbles over his words, but Kurgan makes a, a symbol for him to keep going. We gathered 12 contestants from around the world. Some you might recognize and others everyday fans, just like you at home. And they're going to compete for amazing prizes, the likes of which have never been given away before. We're here in Cape Karma, a dusty old ghost town deep in the Mojave Desert. And we've purchased the entire town to turn into one giant escape room extravaganza. That's right. Our contestants are trapped here until they can collect the keys to the city and escape in their very own brand new Tesla. And Kurgan quickly pans the camera over as Mr. Man <laughs> hustles to like get in front of it uh, to a nearby collection of Teslas <laughs> that are just sitting on the salt flat nearby. Each of them have an obnoxious rap with a branded corporate sponsor on them. Oh. They are complete <laughs> eyesores and honestly, if if you had any other option, you might wanna not want to drive these, but I don't know your particular living situations. This might be an upgrade from nothing. I think Sandals is sitting here muttering to himself like, hmm, I mean you can probably get the rap removed after the fact, but <laughs> I wonder where the nearest charger is. I mean, it's got to be within driving distance, right? There's no way they'd strand us out here with one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so as as they pan over, Mr. Man is going to continue his, uh, his spiel. Each of our contestants will have a chance to drive home their very own Tesla, thanks to a partnership with my good friend Ellen Tusk and the generous support of our sponsors. But first, they have to find the keys to the city, hidden around our newly renovated Cape Karma. And to raise the stakes even higher, one of the Teslas contains the actual key to the city, the deed to Cape Karma itself. That's right, we're giving away a whole town. The clues we've hidden around town hint at which Tesla to pick for the grand prize. And it's first come, first serves. So the faster you find the keys, the better your chance of picking the winner. Sandal's hand is straight up in the air right now. Like he's asking <laughs> to get like called called on. <laughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't look like Mr. Man is in, in the mood to take any questions at the moment. Uh, Sandals completely <laughs> just keeps waiting with his hand in the air. Like just very <laughs> eagerly. Like, teacher, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> like you can clearly see Mr. Beast make eye contact and then <laughs> stop and then look away. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he he finishes up his speech. Says, "All right, let's cut there. I, all right, 
and then he drops the YouTuber cadence a little, but it's kind of baked into his voice now, like uh, like when you get an image baked into a, a, your monitor from looking at it for five million hours. And he says, all right, I'll, I'll hand you guys over to the event coordinator, Miss Potatoes, to explain how everything works. I gotta go shoot a spot for the man meat grand opening. And uh, anyone with uh, at least one rank in pop culture has heard of uh, the man meat uh, <laughs> restaurant chain uh, that is branded with his face and they have a very unfortunate slogan man meat put my meat in your mouth <laughs> <laughs> so he runs off to take care of that and you're left with Miss Potatoes and we're going to stop looking at these ugly cars and go back to the stage alright so Miss Potatoes uh, comes out, uh, having already been introduced. She feels no need to double up and introduce herself. She says, I'll be your event coordinator this weekend. Um, we're planning to wrap filming by noon on Sunday. So you've got tonight, Friday, Saturday, and the first half of Sunday to search the town. The Cape Escape app on your phones will provide hints and track which keys you found. Uh, it will also page you when it's one, your turn for one of our scripted events. We've got several of those planned, so please keep your eye out for them. Um, we'll also need you in groups of four for those scripted encounters. Um, you're all adults. So I trust you to form groups on your own. In the meantime, your fear feel free to explore the town and start hunting for keys. Oh, and of course, be careful out there. It's a creepy old town and we wouldn't want you getting hurt. But as a reminder, you've all signed your release forms and the Cape Town staff is not responsible for any personal injury that may result as a part of this downtown. Any questions? And uh, she, she looks over <laughs> Sandal, whose hand I assume is still in the air after two <laughs> Yes. Speeches. I was going to say he perks up again, like the moment they say any questions. I mean, his hand has been up the whole time, but he like visibly bounces in his seat. You can see <laughs> in her eyes, she was really hoping there would not be any questions, but she sighs and relents and says, uh, um, all right, you there. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. I have so many questions. Um, my first question is, uh, they mentioned that we had to uh, find all the keys around town in order to then own the town. Um, I guess my first question is, uh, is that what all the tax paperwork we had to sign first was about? And uh, furthermore about tax, do we have to suddenly pay property tax? I mean, that's a pretty big acquisition. I assume that there's a pretty significant monetary value on just this land uh, to begin with. That's before we get to the historical value of all this property. And oh boy, I looked into the history of this place and it seems like there's quite a lot of history here. Secondly, um, those cars, I assume those are because they're prizes. Those also have some sort of monetary value that we're responsible for. Is there an accountant on staff that we can talk to? And he just like keeps <laughs> going for like every single question down the possible line that you could ask. He is just without even stop, like he's not even stopping to get get an answer he's just <laughs> listing all of his questions and it probably goes on for like a solid maybe eight minutes straight before he's like okay did you get all that um sorry do we, should i start over a minute into that question jet just pulls down his cap slides <laughs> down his fold-up chair until the horse is out of line of sight and just starts and just lights up <laughs> What, what's he got some real promise yeah yeah this is he he could uh he could be an apprentice in your industry with an attitude like that exactly so uh you can tell well everyone other than sandals can tell that after 10 seconds into this rambling barrage of questions she has completely lost the plot uh, she's she's motioning to staff to like go ahead get started and whatever else they need to be doing um and since she mentioned people splitting up into groups all the other contestants have already split up into groups and have left your ass behind uh <laughs> over the course <laughs> of th this uh this barrage so once you're finally done uh she says uh any and all concerns can be the 
deflected to our legal department uh, at your earliest convenience. Ah, uh, goodbye. Legal department. I should have thought about that. You're so right. Thank you so much for your time. And she's just walking away, and he's like, man, she she was so nice. <laughs> I'm glad that was his takeaway from that. All right. So looking around, you see that pretty much everyone has wandered off by now. The, the the crew is getting ready for what they need to be doing. The other contestants have split up into groups and have started the case in the town. This only leaves five individuals uh, left here in front of the stage, which is odd since she said groups of four, but uh, whatever. Now that these five individuals are left alone, what do they do? I think Sandals looks around and is ca like counting and just sitting there trying to do math to figure out how we can turn this group of five into a four stack. And <laughs> like, it isn't even uh, occurring to him that they might just need to be a five stack. Like he's truly trying to figure out how we can make this work. So uh, Javier just immediately goes up to Grayson and is just like, uh, hey man, so uh, I was supposed to be like taking pictures for this event and, uh, but like, am I participating in it too? Like, I don't even really, like, to be perfectly honest, this event seems really poorly run. I mean, you guys just hired me out of the blue. This is like really bizarre. I'm not going to turn down the paycheck. I mean, it's pretty incredible, but uh, yeah, this is like, this is pretty bizarre. I got to be honest. I, you were... I totally, totally get it, but I got to tell you, event operations, totally different team. I'm just here to make sure that things don't go south. I'm actually, if you're on staff, these th these three don't have a fourth. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Uh. Oh, yeah. Who, who knows? Who knows what we're doing here, man? You know, you were there when I first got here. I haven't had a chance to check in with any op staff yet at all. Uh, I don't have a list of what the different buildings are called, what sort of hazards to expect. I don't have anything ready yet. And Sandals, hearing that, you remember that if you bring up the Cape Escape app on your phone, you get a map of the town. So that might be something you could want to share with this safety coordinator. Yeah, Sandals is already walking over to them and he's like, hi, uh, Sandals. You might know me. I'm San Sandy, Sandy's stories. Uh, anyway, I'm like, I was, I'm a contestant. Uh, I assume you two are contestants. I'm also a contestant. Uh, it's just so much fun that we're all here right now. And I need a group. And I think you two do too. And uh, I just thought, you know, I kind of think I might have a head start in this whole thing. I've been kind of paying really close attention. And there's like a map like right here. Like if you open the app on your phone, I can show you where to download it if you want. Um, you can get like the map of the town on your phone. And he's just like literally explaining and like holding a smartphone out to these people as if he thinks they don't know what a smartphone is. But like very, very sincerely, not like being patronizing on purpose, just genuinely being like, and like, this is the home button. And if you press the home button, it makes the map go away. So you open the app and you press this and that gives you the map again. Okay, that's actually really useful. Uh, yeah. Sandy, Sandy, is it? I'm, I'm yeah. really sorry to have to tell you, like, I'm, I'm on the staff here. I'm not a contestant. We're not, we're not here to be part of your group. <laughs> oh my God. That's so embarrassing. Oh, oh, uh, wow. Ah, uh, uh, ooh, but, but wow, don't worry, don't gaff. worry about it. Um, but, um, I think you're already supposed to be looking for the clues. You're, you're supposed to be searching already. I think for just a second. You see a flash of true horror on his face <laughs> as he realizes that he's like losing time. And then he's like, you are so right. Oh, I need to get my head back in the game here. Oh, man. I thank you. Oh, thank you so much. What was your name? I, I'm Grayson. I'm Grayson. Ha Javi, was it right? Javi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can call me Javi, Javier. I think I think it would be perfect if you just followed Sandy around for a while and get some good footage. 
Oh, that would be so much help. Here, and then he hands you his own phone, and he's like, "Can you, uh, can you take some pictures with this too? I need them for my chat. I really, I hate to be that guy, Javi. Uh, if I can call you that, if I can call you Javi, I would really. You can call me Sandy, by the way. All my friends call me Sandy. Um, if you could take some pictures of me for my thing too, that would also be awesome. And he like leans in, and he's like, "And if you swipe to the left, you get the video mode. So if you press that, that gives it a video. Do you need? Do you, have you ever used?" one of these before uh, you can get it you're so smart i uh you seem like you really know your way around a camera so anyway uh don't want to lose any time so uh should we maybe get the others too M more people working on it might mean more clues am i right he's totally just like walking off at this point without even stopping <laughs> grayson is seeing the other two sitting around for the first time like hadn't even looked what um a luchador and and a guy that slinked down in his chair um are you guys not excited about this event it's supposed to be the big thing this weekend why aren't you out looking it's gonna for be huge it's gonna be absolutely gigantic <laughs> uh manifesto is uh he has propped up what appears to be uh, a small custom funko pop of himself on the stage and is taking pictures of it and uh <laughs> staring at his phone and taking selfies uh, that just maybe might have Mr. Man somewhere in the distance in the background and post already thinking of captions of like me with the with my bro that kind of thing <laughs> uh, but of course he's hearing all sorts of chatter and getting uh, some attention his way and uh, he, he, he makes his way over to the rest of the group once he gets those good shots and he's you know he's like hey bros hey I'm a uh, I'm running on three bed Red Bulls and a, a family-sized bag of Skittles here, but I, I'm ready to go. I don't think that's quite good enough to maintain your health, but whatever works for you, why aren't you out looking for clues? Well, you know, I, I went over because they had like a craft services thing, but nothing there looked good, man. Whoever did that, it was not great. <laughs> uh, but... You, you know, I, I like taking my time with this. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. And you know, this is gonna be a battle of the thinkers, not a battle of the, the speeders, you know? You just gotta, you know, think. And that's what I'm doing in my head right now. And uh, you, you guys also look like good thinkers too. Even if you're on the staff, that means you've got like the inside deets. So, you know, don't, don't feel free. Like there's no barrier between you and me, man. We can like share. You know, I respect that. I I appreciate it. Sorry, what was your name again? Uh, my my name is uh, Manifesto. Man <laughs> Manifesto. He, he, you got it. It's pretty close, bro. It's okay. <laughs> At this point, Jet has his feet up on the now abandoned chair in front of him and has achieved tilting back his own chair at a frankly impossible angle. <laughs> that does not look safe. Can you at least put that chair down flat on the ground, please? He makes a great display of rolling forward, standing up, cracking his back, and bowing. <laughs> uh, great. Yeah. Sarcasm. Great. Um, are you here for the event? What's your What's your deal? I take it this is the last chosen at football group. Uh, I think this is just the hasn't figured out that you're already started the event group. Um, are you participating? Are you doing team activities? I mean... <laughs> bad blink <laughs> what's your name jet all right jet so i'm gonna go ahead and put down here that jet manifesto san oh he's he's long gone sandals and <laughs> javi i'm putting you on their team you guys oh. are a team all right go do cool. team stuff uh sure i think at this point sandals pops up right next to all of you and it's like oh we got all the people we need oh uh that's great uh i was thinking maybe we should head to just like 
the town square maybe and just see or you know like the center maybe near town hall uh and just see what everyone else is doing you know you know mr mr sandy sandals man you know i've heard of you and i he you know i respect you bro takes, he fully takes your hand in his hand and is like <laughs> i love your work what was your name my name is Manifesto, and you know I like your idea. You know about the town hall, the the, the center. That's but you know we're gonna be looking for stuff. We need to observe. So I see on your little your little map thing here, your map quest. There's a, an observatory, and I think if we want to observe, we should go there. I think he, Sander, Sandals is just actually deeply pondering this. Like, yeah, that's actually pretty profound. Yeah, that's a uh, rock solid uh, log logic there. Can't argue that. You know, I, I knew I would love you guys. I really, I respect you. I respect all of you, each and every one of you. I just want you to know that. All right, so I guess that makes you the leader. Oh, oh, me? L little <laughs> me. Oh, yeah. you know. I mean, you had the idea. You pointed out the flaw with my idea. So clearly you know what you're doing. I mean, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to disagree with you at this point in time. I don't oh, think okay, sounds stuff. good. Let's go. All right, everyone, we're heading off. And we just start heading off. All we're right. The observatory. We stop dawdling. We just go. Yeah, excellent. So our group has assembled and they have a mission to undertake. And we are going to take so, a brief intermission before we get to that. Mr. GM, <laughs> man, uh -huh. uh, do we what's the Wi-Fi situation here? Uh, so if you want to pull out your phone and check, uh, you'll realize that there is a local network uh, that you are able to connect through and get out to the outside world. But there is like no 4G, no 3G. You have no bars of any kind here outside of the Wi-Fi. That Wi-Fi is your sole link to the outside world. Nothing bad will happen to it, I'm sure. So can Manifesto here, can he be doing his little live stream, his little uh, just oh, chatting? No. Uh, absolutely. Uh, they have a mobile hotspot set up here, so you can do that. Um, if everyone tries to do it at once, you might like overload the network a little bit and get your stream pretty choppy, but it looks like most people are focused on the actual scavenger hunt for now, so you're getting a pretty good connection. Okay, Mr. Manifesto, he's got his little phone on the like, necklace, that kind of thing, walking around with him, and he's got his two or three viewers along for the ride with him. You know, they keep dropping and coming back, but I imagine that's the situation. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to take five, uh, go get some refreshments, and uh, then we will pick up with starting to explore Cape Karma. Okay. Here All we right. go. Hey. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs>